So I want to end with a positive note. <laughs> I have to, I have to. And in fact, the book, the last chapter of the book, it says, let's let some sunshine into these dungeons. Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who was a poet, and he was in prison in, Gul in Stalin's Gulag Archipelago, says, the line between good and evil is not abstract, it's not, it lies in the center of every human heart. In fact, he says it cuts through the center of every human heart. And so it's a decision we have to make all the time. It's not an abstract concept. This is the guy who exposed the, the abuses at, at Abu Ghraib. A lowly private military policeman whose buddy, Charles Grainer, gave him the CD. He took it, he looked at it, he said, this is horrible. We're supposed to bring, bring in democracy to these people. How could we be doing this? He took the CD and he brought it to a senior investigating office, a real soldier, knowing his buddies were going to get in trouble and knowing they're going to get back at him. He had to be put in protective custody and hiding for three years, along with his wife, along with his mother, because everybody wanted to kill them. Not, in the, not only in the battalion, in his hometown. Because they said it was he who humiliated the military, rather than he as the hero. He just got out. And so it reminds me of the hero, the Chinese student, the tank man, who, who stood up and opposed the uh, Chinese authority, the tanks going to crush the student rebellion. And so from now on, I'm going to stop being immersed in evil. I've done that, been there. I've changed my focus to study heroism. And this is what I'm going to end with, just, just one, one minute more. I go from banality of evil to say the flip side is the banality of heroism. There, there are evil people like Hitler, like Stalin, but what Hannah Arendt is saying, there are people whose evil is just of the moment, of the situation. And I'm saying heroes are the same thing. There are lifelong heroes, Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, whose whole life is organized around sacrifice. They are the exception. Most people like Joe Darby. Most people like Christina Maslach, who was uh, the woman who stopped the Stanford Prison Study by saying, it's terrible what you're doing to those boys and force me to stop it. Uh, <clears throat> those are people who have never done a heroic deed before probably will never do a heroic deed again, but something about the situation inflames their heroic imagination, while other people, it's, it's instilling a, a hostile imagination. And we don't know anything about those people. There's no psychology of heroism. I did, for the book, I went through all the research, and it's all retrospective analysis of people who helped the Jews 20 years after the fact, asking them what they did. So the question is, how can we uh, inflame the heroic... Um, uh, uh, Imagination. So I wanted. To, I'm going to. We're starting. I have a website. Whole program. How do you how do you instill the heroic imagination in children, in all of us? We know from psychology. If you think about yourself as a certain kind of person, you're more likely to become that person, as somebody who's generous, as somebody who doesn't litter, maybe as somebody who's a hero. So we, so I'm democratizing heroism. I don't want it to be about superheroes. I don't want it to be guys on on bronze horses in parks. It says any of us in the same situation that makes some people passive, and most people are, makes some people become perpetrators. In that same situation, some people, it does two things. To be a hero, you have to take action when everybody else is passive, and you have to stop thinking about yourself. Heroes become sociocentric rather than egocentric. That's, that's all you have to do to be a hero, take action on behalf of somebody else. So let's look at, for a moment, we're going to end with, Wesley Autry was the subway hero in New York. African-American, 50-year-old construction worker who's standing on a platform, and the guy has a seizure, falls on the tracks, so across the track. The train is going to cut him in two. There are 75 people watching saying, whoa, isn't that amazing? He's got the excuse not to do it. He's got his two daughters there. And instead, he t tells somebody, take care of my daughters, and he jumps on the tracks. Let's see what it looks like to be a hero in action. And, and then we will end, I promise. City subway. It's hard enough finding someone who will give up his seat to a stranger, let alone be willing to give up his life for one. The train was coming in like, like, like that. It happened just. 50-year-old Wesley Autry, a construction worker and Navy veteran, was standing on a subway platform with his two little girls when, right in front of them, a man started having a seizure. He kind of stumbled and over his own feet and fall backwards. I see a train coming, but the train is so close, I'm like, what do I do? Wesley jumped onto the tracks and thought if he could just lie on top of the man, keep him from flailing, maybe the train would roll right over both of them. 
The clearance was exactly 21 inches. Wesley and the man, 20 and a half. No way the train can stop before this gentleman could get him, get him up off the tracks. So he covered him with his body and pushed him down to a point where the train wouldn't hit his head and held him down under the tracks while the train came and rolled right over the top. It gave Wesley's children the scare of their young lives. I thought he was going to get killed. And Wesley, the scare of his too. I'm like talking to him, sir, you can't move. I got two kids up here looking for the father to come back. I don't know you, you don't know me, but listen, don't panic. You know, I'm here to save you. As for the guy Wesley saved, he's 20-year-old Cameron Hollipter. And other than a few scrapes and bruises, his father says he's doing fine. Mr. Autry's instinctive and unselfish act saved our sense of life. You know, the word hero gets thrown around a lot nowadays. What a better way to say to start off the new year than to save, save a life. <laughs> nice to be reminded of what one really looks like. Steve Hartman, uh, If you want CBS more, please News, read Luther Effect, Understanding How Good People Turn Evil. Thank you for your attention. I really appreciate you.